nature of the technology is such that it's very, very difficult for the private sector all by itself without a key role for the government to deploy it. And, and so one reason is the lifespan of the assets is so long. You're talking about sort of century long asset lifespans. Uh, they're, they're talking openly in the US now about licensing nuclear reactors right off the bat for 100 years. Um, so the, the, the original approach was 40 years plus 20 plus 20. They're now talking about you know, 80, 80 plus 20 or 100, 100 off the bat. These are very long-lived assets. Um, but if you put anything through a discounted cash flow analysis, as you would know very well, John, you basically find that anything after about year 20 or 25 doesn't, doesn't have much bearing at all on the valuation of that asset. And so, and, and this is the standard method taught in every business school, used in every corporation, used in treasury, I'm sure, used all around the world, certainly in the West, um, to value assets is the discounted cash flow method, the net present value calculation. And as soon as you apply that method, what you're basically saying is, I don't care how long the asset life is, I'm going to treat it as if it's only a 20 to 25 year asset life. And so at that point, you, you, you're basically making a false comparison. And so on that basis, we never would have built the snowy scheme. Uh, we, would, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't build anything of, of long life. And so the question I think we need to ask ourselves as a nation and as taxpayers is what do we want to leave for our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren? You know, our grandfathers and great-grandfathers left things like the Snowy Scheme for us and other, you know, long-lived assets, which were made on the basis of strategic government decisions for <coughs> national security reasons. Uh, and the question is, is, is that the way we should be thinking about things like our electricity system? Can I ask for a, a bit more detail then? What exactly would government intervention look like uh, to support nuclear, because I think, I don't know if this is an olive branch or just getting myself in trouble, I can see one thing about the status quo that would potentially lend itself to a, a decent argument for the government, and that is the, uh, the, the ESG movement has successfully convinced a lot of money lenders not to lend money to the, the best economic investment, but only to the one that you can successfully sell to the ESG crowd, which makes it hard sometimes for uh, good investments to, to get the loan that they need. Uh, and if that ESG is a cancer, spoiler, it is, uh, then you could see how people could potentially make an argument for, I mean, I, I wouldn't make this argument, but I would be sympathetic to people who did, uh, saying that that could be an argument for the government to get involved in the financing leg of then a privately run nuclear power station. Is that what you mean, or do you have a, a bigger vision of government involvement? Yeah. Yeah, so the financing is the crux. So the financing chapter in this study explains some of the thinking on that. The financing is definitely the, the, at the core of the issue. You're talking about you know, large capital assets um, that, that need, uh, need a lot of debt as well as equity in the capital structure to make sense. Um, so that, that is the core of it. So I'm not saying that government does everything. I think there's a need for, there's roles for government, clearly in regulation and safety and all those things. There's roles for government in nuclear. Um, it's a licensed activity. Any power generation station is a licensed activity, nuclear especially so. Um, but the government needs the private sector as much as the private sector needs the government. So the balance of roles is really important. And if, you, and if you're gonna get debt in the capital structure, which you do need, you are gonna have to show the bankers long-term off-date contracts. That's abundantly clear. That was abundantly clear in 2017 when we talked to every bank, every large bank in Australia, uh, and they told us that in the case of any power station, you need long-term offtake contracts.